Hello, this is FMR and this is episode 11 of the Lakeland 100 training series. This week I'm going to be telling you about the races that I have coming up because it isn't just the Lakeland 100 that I've been training for. But first, as always, last week's training. And this week we're pushing the mileage up to 140 kilometers. That's about 88 miles for you people that still work in Imperial, you crazy lot. So I started the week off with a big mileage day. Monday, in the morning I did 26 kilometers over the hills of the South Downs, 500 meters of elevation gain. And then in the evening, I ran on the treadmill with Zwift doing their 10K community run. So that was a total of 36 kilometers on Monday. On Tuesday, I was back on the treadmill in the morning doing the film My Run 500. It's Tuesday and I've already done a thousand meters of elevation. So that's what you need to think about when you're planning these things. Uh, and then in the evening I went out for a nice flat easy run with my club in the real world, the Worthing Harriers. So that was 14 kilometres done on Tuesday. That made a total of 50k by Tuesday evening. The Wednesday workout is 11 kilometres and it's an over under threshold session so you don't get a lot of recovery. For me I think it was 15 kilometers an hour for 600 meters and then 14 kilometers an hour for 400 meters. And we did that about seven times, but I gradually increased the pace as well as I went. Max heart rate 170, so definitely into zones four and five for my Wednesday session. Now, usually on a Thursday, I'd start my day with the film My Run 500, but in order to make sure I hit my 140 kilometer target for the week, I needed to fit in another 10K. So 10K, nice and easy on the seafront in the morning. And then 11.35, I did my 500 meter climb on Zwift. And then back on Zwift in the evening for bag that badge, which was only 5K. And then Friday was a day off because we were traveling to Wales to take part in the UTS 50k. 3,300 meters of elevation gain, twice up Snowdon. This 50k was not to be messed with and you'll be able to see the video when it's completed of the full day that Victoria and I did. It really was an amazing race. The weather turned out to be just about perfect even though the 100 mile race had been abandoned the night before due to bad weather. We managed to get sunshine and if you want a really technical, probably the most technical 50K you'll ever do, then the UTS 50 is the one for you, let me tell you. Suffice to say 52 kilometers in all added to the week's training and that made around 134 kilometers for the week. And Sunday was a really special day to round off the week. On our way home from Wales from the UTS 50k, we stopped off in Oxford at the Ifley Road track, or more precisely the Roger Bannister track. It's the track where Roger Bannister ran his sub four minute mile, the first person in the world to do it. What an honor it was to run on the track and gave you such a, a sense of history. We did a mile in honor of Roger Bannister. Actually, I did 6K in total with a little bit of a warm up and a cool down. So 6K in total on the track, but one mile in honor of Roger Bannister. You can see a video of me and Victoria doing that up there. But if you do get a chance, go and have a run on the Ifley Road track. Absolutely superb day you'll have. So now we get into the stats. So 140 kilometers for the week, 105 of that was outside and 35 kilometers was on the treadmill on Zwift. We did 10 sessions altogether and of those we did two hard sessions and the 50k isn't included in the hard sessions. So the one Roger Bannister mile that we did, I did that fairly hard and also the Wednesday interval session. That was a hard session, but those are my two hard sessions for the week. Uh, so that's 20%, isn't it? Two out of 10 is 20%. So in terms of heart rate, uh, 25 minutes in zone four and five, 
uh, so just 2% uh, there. Um, and if we divide it up in terms of distance, so we ran 140K, uh, but 13 kilometers of that was a hard effort. So that's the one Roger Bannister mile and the 11 kilometers on Zwift on Wednesday. Uh, that comes to 9.3%, so 9.3% hard effort. So again, look at it whichever way you want, whichever way suits you the best, whichever way you like, uh, we can divide our 140K uh, to see how much hard work we did over the course of the week. A couple of weeks ago, I passed that cafe and it was really hot and I was desperate to stop for a drink. And this time I thought, you know what? Why not? I'm gonna stop for a drink. So I'm now full of coffee uh, and San Pellegrino lemonade. Okay, let's move on. So this series that I'm doing has all been about training for the Lakeland 100. 100 mile race happening at the end of this month, the end of July, 2022. But 2022, is a bit more than just Lakeland 100. See, maybe I haven't been entirely truthful about what it is I am exactly training for this season. It turns out that quite a lot of events and opportunities have occurred in the back end of this year that I can't really afford to pass up and I don't really want to miss out on. And the first of those opportunities is in Chamonix at the end of August. So a month after Lakeland, I'll be running 140K in Chamonix as part of the UTMB week. This is the World Series finals, arguably the mecca of ultra running in the year with respect to the Western States 100 in California. I've been on the start list for this event three times. Now the first year I did start but coming back from injury, I was undertrained. I literally fell asleep on the trail and DNF'd the race in 2019. 2020, of course, was canceled because of COVID. And then in 2021, I was going really well, but unfortunately, as many of you know, a runner fell and lost their life on the trail just ahead of me. And so the race was abandoned we all had to go back to the previous aid station. But as a result of that, I was given a guaranteed entry into this year's race. So obviously I can't afford to pass that up. If you want to watch my DNF from 2019, uh, that's up there as well. Now, if there's one race I could have put off till next year, it's the Ben Nevis Ultra. However, I've DNF'd it twice. I have to go back and I have to finish it. So that's the only reason that as soon as I DNF'd last year's race, I rebooked for this year. That race is in September. It's about three weeks after the TDS. It's 50K, it's 4,000 meters of elevation gain. You've got to be quick because the cutoffs are tight. So I need to be on it. I need to finish that race this year. Next thing is, I've been very lucky this year to be able to gain a place in the Berlin Marathon. It's the flattest marathon in the world. It's the fastest marathon in the world. I can't turn down the opportunity to run in Berlin and run a sub three marathon. It's got to be done. When is the Berlin Marathon? It's a week after Ben Nevis. But oh no, it doesn't end there. You see, this total fiasco of a race schedule means I also have the London Marathon a week after Berlin. So if you think my 2022 race schedule is completely ridiculous and you're not already subscribed to the channel, well do click that button below and press the bell so you're notified every time I upload a video because you'll be able to keep tabs on how badly my race schedule is going. So we have Lakeland 100 at the end of July. 
we have the TDS 140K with 9,000 meters of elevation gain at the end of August. Halfway through September, we have the Ben Nevis Ultra with four and a half thousand meters of elevation gain. Then a week later, we have the Berlin Marathon where I'm going for a sub three hour time. Then a week after that, we have the London Marathon where, to be honest, I'm just gonna enjoy myself. And let's face it, why not finish off the year with a thousand meter climb at the Beachy Head Marathon in October in Eastbourne. And while we're thinking about the TDS in Chamonix, Two good YouTuber friends of mine are doing their own series at the moment on their training for UTMB and TDS. So we've got Lloyd Purvis at Run For Adventure. He's doing a whole series on his training for TDS. So we're gonna get the bus together in Chamonix to the start of the race. But go and check out his channel for his training series. And then Ben Parks and Sarah, they are doing a training series for UTMB. So they'll be out in Chamonix as well. They're doing the full 100 mile race, uh, the full UTMB course. So check out their channel as well for their training series. And what a fantastic way to finish off the run by lying in the sea to cool off. If you have missed the rest of the training series, then do uh, click on that link just there. That should take you to the whole playlist and you can watch the rest of the Lakeland 100 training series. Next week, we'll be talking about tapering. How much should you taper for your long runs and for your races? And we'll see you for episode 12 of the Lakeland 100 training series. Bye-bye.